service trailer. And the gentleman said, what are you doing here? You're not supposed to be in here to get him like, oh, well, listen, sir, I'm one of the lead actors and I don't care. You wait outside and get some water. I'm like, what? So I was just about to grab. I was just about to grab and just grab his, the collar of his shirt just in the way so I can get some of his carotid. Mm -hmm. And kind of like, you know, like you're going to blank out in the second tail. Because there was like a ice cream machine behind him. You know, you could open it up and get your ice cream. So I was going to pin him against that. Just get that leverage and get a nice, good fulcrum on him. Mm -hmm. And I just, it was, the urge was so there. Because just the way, he, I, can just, I can just see him. I can hear him saying the N-word while he mm -hmm. was talking to me. I can just hear it. And I was just going to, I was like, oh, man. Oh, man. Okay. I already saw it. I saw exactly where I was going, what I was going to do. So I turned around and walked out, got on my phone, called my agent, and said, I'm going to go stand over there somewhere until somebody calls production and lets them know that that man said that. Because if anybody says anything, anything to me right now, I'm going to just explode mm -hmm. because I can just see him saying the N word. I can hear it. I can, it was just, he, it was, I can smell it off of him. Mm -hmm. He meant that, you know, and a couple of days later, a couple of days earlier, I was leaving uh, the mall and uh, this gentleman, <laughs> this gentleman said, you know, F and N word. And I went, what? And I looked and he just peeled off. <laughs> and I'm like, because I made a move. Mm -hmm. I made a move. So, um, but have you ever had to like find yourself in a situation? I mean, I, I know at times where you 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 feel it, you 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 know what they're thinking, but yeah, you're in a situation where you're in this balance of trying. Okay, do I stay professional and and suck it up, right? Or there's that other hard level where it's like okay how do i make change by staying quiet yeah. because it's like it's almost to the point where like you know when people people have said that this this goes in in the in the climate we're dealing with right now i'm sure you've heard politicians i'm sure you've heard yeah. you know anytime there's a situation that happens with a person of color and they and and you always have that one spokesperson that says or even friends that you have in your inner circle that say, right. you know, well, um, I haven't experienced that. Like it doesn't, or it doesn't happen here as much in my mm. neighborhood mm. or, um, I've never been in a situation where I've experienced, you know, racism or right. they say, well, I have black friends, right. so I'm not a racist or whatever, et cetera, et cetera. And to me, it's like, there's this, this balance of like almost to the point where like we're supposed to just take it and keep moving. Right. And to me, it's like, you know, I, I, I don't know about you, like in retrospect of like what attracts you when you get a script or you get presented with an offer, what attracts you to that role? Is it more of, I, I can tell you what it is. It's always, it's always how they have developed that character. Mm hmm. Because if I'm going to embody that character he has, I, it, it, it needs to be something for me to attach myself to. And for sure, um, it, it's got to be a character with uh, gravitas, with intellect, with power. Mm -hmm. um, and even if he doesn't have much to say, you know, the presence is still there. And he's always treated like a man, not because of his skin color. He's a man. And that is one of the first things I look for. Uh, not the guy that's the through line, but the guy all the time. Even if it's second, third, fourth cat on the, on the call sheet, six cat, seven cat, number 41 cat. You know, I was number 41 on Badlands because of third, third season. Okay. So even with that, there was something there that I know that every day I come to work, and this goes back to what you were saying earlier. When you approach anyone in any circumstances, on the street, on the job, the way you present yourself, there's 
something that they can see in your aura. Okay, I need to treat him just like he's treating me right now. He's a no fuck about kind of guy. Mm -hmm. So we're good, right? Even well, if do they, you feel that? Do you feel that that work? Because I mean, I know even if they hate me, even, even if I think they don't like me, even if I mean, there's been times I walked in rooms mm -hmm. and there was some guy there that was just like, oh no, we're not casting that cat, and this is the reason why. I've had I've had it all. But do you feel I, it's do you feel it's, it, it's because of you know because I think I think what it boils down to, and I always say like, you know, when you have a me and you have personalities, we right. have a presence, we have a right. A, a strong demeanor. We we have conviction about who we are as right. black men. Exactly, and, and that's what a it lot is. Of times people look at that situation as I don't even say if it's arrogance because it's not. It's I not. Think it's just it's just who you are and where you come from. Exactly. I've had an agent. And, I, I I've had an agent at, at a. I'm not going to mention the name. But we're in a big mm -hmm. room with all these people, and I remember we were talking, and one of the lead partners said, "Would you tone yourself down?" And I'm like, well, would I tone myself down for what? what? What are you talking about? And he goes, well, mm -hmm. you, know, you have this present, you have this, that. And I just straight said, would you ask Tom Cruise to tone himself down? And I've worked with Tom on Collateral. And honestly, that's, I mean, it's good that you said his name because it's like people, what they see on TV, and I'm sure you understand this as an entertainer as well, people have a hard time seeing reality. Yeah. And real, and yeah. I work with a lot of cats. And to me, Tom not only is a general, like a complete general on set, a professional a guy who's a perfectionist, but straight up one of the nicest, yeah. down to earth guys, yeah, that you ever meet. And 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 he's very passionate and he's very yeah loving. And 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 it's the same with Keeper Sullivan. Like I remember, yeah, just like you said with Dennis Hopper. Like you know, you walk on certain sets with certain people for the first time. And you've, you've, you've admired their work from afar. And you don't really know what you're going to get. Because I always say, you know, your heroes sometimes disappoint you. And I remember that walking happened. onto that set. Exactly. Nervous, scared as shit. Deer in headlights. And I'm watching Kiefer and even Tom walk around this room. And, you know, PAs are running after them. And, and, and they're not even saying nothing. It's sex shit. This it's sex aura. shit. It's just what it is. It's it sex is. shit. But and you get past it. Both of these guys are super tiny, like very small individual guys. Yeah, I'm six foot yeah, three. Yeah. And they're like five four, five five, five six, roughly. Yeah. And you're seeing this this commanding presence of the sense of who they are. And I'm and I'm just I was literally just in awe watching. I'm going, okay, but when you and this is where I have the the which you can maybe answer to this, it's like do you, do you feel there's a difference in the sense of where, okay, guys like that, their, their intimidation aspect of their characters, because Keeper is very commanding. When you, when you look at him, you always think in Jack Bauer, you know, always. But out, off camera, he's the nicest guy. But when it comes to work, he don't play. Yeah. And those guys are considered, you know, when they have that loud put about bravado, you know, attitude, they're considered, you know, general professionals, yeah. guys that you can respect. But when it's a black person in our business put into that situation, whether it's a female or whether it's a male, when you come in there to work and you come in there and, and you, you know exactly who you are as a person, as you say, you, you know, my, my mentors just tell me actors don't act, they feel. They feel the emotion. They feel the scene. They feel the presence of every layer. And they try to take every layer and bring it into a role. So for you, when you say, okay. Hang, hang on a second. I have somebody yep. at my door. Okay. It's open. <laughs> Still on my call here. <laughs> uh, I love it. Okay, so, so yeah, you, you, so you said before earlier where you were like, you know, when the person said for you to tone it down. And we're always told to tone it down and because we're looked at as not in the same aspect of, because you would never tell a Tom Cruise to turn it down on set. You would never tell no, a Tom Cruise to turn it down. You're not going to ask me to tone myself down. For what? Well, why exactly. am I going to tone myself down? So 
you know, those are. Do you feel there's a difference? Like a different, there's a there's a different level of of respect in the sense of where they're considered what they are. But if we are, of course, of course, who we are and who we are, it takes a lot. Problem it takes, and it, that that cast dress, you know, I don't want to work with Sherman. That guy's yeah. too. It it takes a lot for you to get to a place to where you're respected. As an as an artist, as an individual, as a man, as a black man, all those things, and you know, it, it takes time to do so. You know, you play your cards right, and, and like I said, you know, there's only four living rooms in Hollywood. So what I'm going to do is make sure. I had an acting teacher who used to say this all the time. They may not like me, but they will respect my work. So, um, but I, I take it a, a step further. You know we're all doing the same thing. We're all achieving the same goal. And you can tell when you step on certain people's set, um, when you notice what I do is always, when I'm projecting myself into a space where I'm gonna be working, I'm not just thinking about my fellow actors or the producers or the writers or the showrunner. I'm thinking about craft service, you know, the custodians. I'm thinking about, I gotta get along with everybody and especially the wardrobe department, you know, because they can make your life a living hell by, you know, putting you in some 